In this video, we're going to talk about how we can actually go from this, starting from that. So basically, fixing tan lines, but also evening out the coloration of the skin to be more uniform and very pleasing, especially when it comes to maternity or pretty much anything skin related for that matter. Um, tan lines can also be affected by this. This is something that can be applied to anything. And I want to make very clear that before we begin using Infinite Unify, we have to, first of all, look at the whole picture when it comes to tan lines. So I'm going to turn these all off for a second here and we're going to analyze this step by step. Number one, we have a couple of complex issues here across the whole skin range. We have colors and saturation levels and different, pretty much everything that you can think of that we want to even out. First thing that I actually want to do before we begin retouching is turn the image into black and white. And here on my dodge and burn layers, I'm going to turn my dodge and burn off for a second and turn it on black and white, which is simply a color fill layer, which you can find in your adjustment layers here under solid color, set to black and then change to the color blend mode. The reason why this is very important is because before any color work is done, you want to make sure the luminosity is even first or the brightness or darkness of an area. And what I've done here is I have curves that I use to dodge and burn with. And the dodge is something that I use to even out some of the, the veins and patchiness. And then the, the burn here is what I use to darken the actual tan lines. And when you do that, the only thing then is remaining is going to be the color work. And for those of you who are not familiar, this is simply a curve going down on the midpoint. And I have a black mask. And all I did here was paint with a low flow, about 2%. Till it blended in with the rest of the skin. That's going to be the first thing in regards to tan lines. However, that's not the end of the story because tan lines have a color component as well and you have to focus on that going next. And if you're not familiar, um, my brush settings, for those of you who are wondering, are 0% hardness and 2% flow, which I'm going to be doing there. And I simply just, you know, kind of brushed it in where the tan lines needed brushing and or anything needed to be brushed really if that needed to be filled in a little bit more i'd go to that but i think it looks pretty good based on where it's at so you can see the difference it makes in black and white the reason why i did black and white is because honestly color really distracts from seeing if you're going far enough or not so you can see here if i zoom in you'll notice a couple of things that the saturation and colors are all different and it's very very distracting you're not really sure whether or not you've gone too far this image uh, was provided by Jay Coy, and he's a maternity photographer based out of Boston and a very good friend of mine. And he did such a good job on this photograph that I was very curious to see if I could do it justice. Next, once I have that done, um, I'm going to focus on some of the coloration variations and saturation issues that are happening across the whole image. And here's what we're going to do. Instead of using the one I've already done here to show you a before and after really quick of what we're going to expect, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We're going to start again. I'm going to delete this layer too for a second. Now we want to identify um, a set of colors that kind of re reflect the rest of the skin tone range. I'm going to use my lasso tool here for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and probably just for now sample this area here like that. And then this should reflect the rest of it. You could also work in the opposite way or if you like the color on the, the stomach, you could select that and then it will match match it up to everything else um, so depending on whatever you are specifically going for um, so that's again up to you so once you have that selected i'm going to go ahead and turn on c for color the color blend mode and use the, this mask option and if you're not familiar with any of this stuff here simply go to infinite-tools.com under infinite unify and there's a video on the main page that goes over everything on the settings as well as all other videos on everything else that I do in other genres and all kinds of examples. So definitely go check that out. But for now, those are the two functions I'm going to select on C for color. And this is mask option, which is going to add a black mask to it. So you'll simply hit create. And it adds a mask here with the gradient map. And then I'm going to change my opacity. I'm going to keep it on 50% for now. Then let's go ahead and take my brush tool. Take my flow. I'll go ahead and bring that really high. Let's just go 100% flow. And my hardness set to 0%. 
And your flow is always dictated by how fast you want it to come or not. Sometimes you want to, you know, bring in really slowly to see how it blends. It's sometimes you just, you know, once you have your settings like I do here, I think it's going to look really good. So I'm just going to keep on brushing. So there's a couple of things you'll notice right now is number one, um, it might be a little bit too much because normally what happens is I like to keep my flow a little bit lower normally, like 30%. And I think that looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and keep that for now. So I'll go ahead and continue brushing. And I'm going to avoid the shadows here, but I'm going to also show you something really, really handy if you accidentally paint in the shadow, but you don't mean to. And that is going to be blend if modes. So let's say that, you know, you've started painting here and it doesn't look right in the shadows. So you might be tempted to kind of unpaint that, but we're going to keep that there for a second. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush and brush over everything. And you can see here that everything is starting to like match up really nicely. The area that we selected doesn't change too, too much, which is really important. Um, and the rest, I'm just going to brush in like that. Okay, for now. And I'm going to change my flow to 10% and kind of gently paint in the rest of this area. Okay, so clearly it's a little bit too much, obviously, and that's okay. Now, here's a fun little tool that I'm going to show you. We have an option here called blend if and what that is going to do actually is it's going to exclude the shadows and the brightest parts of the image if I click on it. So just like that, it actually does um, an exclusion process. Sometimes it might be too aggressive where it might exclude um, some of the belly itself and you know the skin. But what we can do here is we can right click and click on blending options. And these black points here, I'm going to just bring that up here like that. And you can see it start coming back here. Now I'll take this point here as well and bring it up a little bit here. And what this tells me basically is that the part on the left hand side over here, the deepest shadows, it's saying that anything to the left of that is off, starting to this point. And then the second point is basically how much it gradually transitions from 0% opacity to 100% opacity. And this is so cool because if the shadows are too much, you can just bring it down until you don't see them in the shadows anymore. And then change this based on how fast you want that ramp to be going from zero to 100. The same thing goes for your highlights. So if you think that, you know what, maybe it's too aggressive in the highlights, I'll just bring it down like that and kind of put it closer to the end here, which I think is a, is a much better way. So if you're ever unsure, kind of play with these and, and have them a little bit close together, maybe like this much apart. And you can look at the image and just visually see what's happening in the shadows. If it's too much, you can kind of do it. And that looks pretty good. You can see the shadow areas here like this are not being affected anymore, which is nice. So I'll just say, OK. Another thing you can also do, obviously, is just take the brush set to black and then kind of paint away from the shadows. Um, but obviously, I think the blending option is really nice because it allows you to um, really focus on um, the areas of the skin. And if it gets too dark, then you can simply kind of exclude it so it's not doesn't look artificial. So that's a really handy feature to have, um, especially built in like that. So it does that and you can see how much better it looks already. And another cool part about this is if you feel like the tone is maybe too yellow or red, you can use a hue slider here to kind of change from left to right like that and, and get what you want. But normally setting it to zero does a, a pretty good job. If you feel like maybe it's too saturated overall, there's a couple of things you can do. My favorite thing is going to my adjustment layer here, adding a hue saturation or vibrance, either one. Um, and then before you do anything, hold Option or Alt, hover between the two layers, and then click on it. And then what it'll do is add a arrow here pointing down, which means that it's only going to affect this unify layer here. Then once that's done, I'll just bring my um, saturation levels down to match whatever it is that I'm going for. And you can see here now that looks pretty good. I think I really like that quite a bit, actually. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that we could do. Another thing that we can also do is, of course, reduce the opacity if we want to. And we can also change the blood mode to hue instead. But I don't recommend that because, again, this image has a ton of saturation variations going on. You can see like the chest is maybe not saturated enough or like the stomach is not saturated enough. So I would just select color and so everything gets evened out in one go. If you're confused about the difference between hue and saturation, 
Again, visit our website and in the education compartment of Infinite Unifies page, you're going to see an explanation of hue versus saturation and color. But that should pretty much do it. You can see how even and nice that looks. It looks incredible. And uh, if you want, you can just put these two by selecting shift and clicking on both of them into one group and then reducing the opacity of the group as a whole as well to get to something very realistic if you so prefer. Again, everybody has their own preferences. But for me, what I did was my gradient map itself. I uh, made sure it was around 47% opacity. I clipped a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And if you want to, you can also use a, another, say, blank layer like this, change it to color or anything that you want, and then hand paint specific areas in case you want more of an effect on something or another as an, as an example. Um, but you don't have to do that, of course, if you don't want to. There you go. Um, I think that should pretty much take care of that for any any image that is full body or has a lot of skin or obviously it could also be fabrics and backgrounds and textures if you wanted to. Um, and this really does a good job of that off the bat.